Okay, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you might be on the interwebs. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, hopefully more will join as we proceed. Ah, this is an official ITF uh, meeting and all such meetings are subjected to uh, ITF rules. Uh, there's this document, the note well document, um, has lots of information regarding uh, the effects of your participation in the ITF process, notably that uh, anything you say uh, is considered a contribution to the ITF during the meeting. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the ISG has asked all chairs to remind their working groups of the need to, for appropriate behavior. This is described in more detail in BCP 54. In summary, ITF participants extend respect and courtesy to their colleagues at all times. ITF participants have impersonal discussions. ITF participants devise solutions for the global internet that meet the needs of diverse technical and operational environments. And individuals are prepared to contribute to the ongoing work of the group. Some meeting tips uh, for remote participants. Uh, please make sure that your audio and video are off unless you are uh, chairing or presenting during a session. Use of a headset is strongly recommended. Using Meet Echo Q, uh, we are using the Meet Echo Q controls, so please uh, raise your hand um, to get into the queue and uh, wait to be called on. Uh, typically, um, the presenter should moderate the queue, but uh, sometimes uh, I'll step in. And if no one's stepping in uh, and you feel that there's a lull, uh, please just go ahead. Um, and also be sure to uh, in it when you're you know at, when it's your turn to the queue, turn on your microphone. Um, actually, <laughs> some people actually forget to turn on their microphone. Uh, so do turn on your microphone, uh, and then when you're done, turn off your microphone. Um, even if you're still in the queue, like you're standing at the mic, but you can like just step away for a moment, uh, turn off your microphone. Um, but when you're actually ready to leave the queue, uh, do leave the queue by pressing the hand symbol again. Um, so you're fully removed and it's not uh, unclear to the chairs uh, whether or not you're still standing in line. Uh, as you know, we're using Meet, Meet Echo um, as well as uh, chat. Um, the chat window, I noticed um, Karsten is on Zulip. I'm not sure if he's able to interact with the chat window here in the Meet Echo client, but, and Michael Richardson as well. Um, but uh, if not, then if someone could, um, monitor the Zulip and uh, capture any notes that they make there. Uh, we are having uh, notes uh, in HedgeDoc in the top of the top middle bar of the screen. There's uh, what looks like uh, uh, a pencil for opening up the note taking tool. Yeah, please um, click that and log in to data tracker and participate in the note taking process. Uh, we do have also um, there's you know the links to these slides as well um, as the well all the slides for the meeting are have been posted and and you can track them there for your interest. The agenda for today's topic is uh, short and sweet. It's just a single topic that we're focusing on today, much like the last interim. Uh, today's topic is Yang metadata annotation for the immutable flag. And the presenter is Shifan Ma. And I believe that is my last slide. So I will bring up Shifan's slides and we'll get going. Can I control the slides? Uh, yes, just give me a second to do that. You should have it now. Oh, yes. Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chu Fang, and this uh, presentation is about the uh, immutable flag. And this is not going to be a long presentation. And again, just feel free to join the queue and go to the mic if you have any comments and questions. 
So uh, first, where is this immutable concept from? And I think uh, this uh, work is actually derived from the discussion of system config draft. I think around uh, two or three years ago when we started to uh, discuss the system config work on the mailing list and people really try to identify uh, different kinds of system config like different kinds of system configuration like the non-modifiable uh, and modifiable system configuration and deletable and non-deletable system configuration so uh, the most initial uh, idea of this immutable concept was really try to document the uh, non-modifiable system configuration. So this uh, immutable concept is tightly rela related to the system config work because a lot of system configuration is immutable. But independent of the implementation of system data store, uh, th that is because uh, even without the system data store, there still would be a lot of system configuration somewhere in the device. While by proposing the system data store, would allow the server to expose an interoperable API for the system configuration visibility. So the immutable concept is independent of the system data store, hence why factor out and be documented in a single draft. So, and in this slide, I try to give a, a formal motivation of the this whole immutable flag idea. And the motivation is that this is already the case today that the servers will reject the client's attempt to uh, try to uh, modify an immutable node in, in, uh, created by the server. So, so servers already do this today and there are proprietary documentations mechanism to, for this immutable concept. And already it's also the case today that the client will receive errors uh, if when such violations occur. So while the an error might be sufficient to, to allow the a client to, to understand that uh, the client is not allowed to modify an immutable configuration, it would be much better if the uh, if the client could have some prior knowledge to about this immutability and uh, avoid the errors at the very beginning. So there is a desire to formally flag which nodes a server considers immutable so that the client can know beforehand when such violations may occur. And this work really is merely about the visibility for the clients to know which configuration is immutable and tries to be uh, to make the server's behavior to be more transparent to the clients. So this is uh, the motivation of this work. And the current solution of uh, this immutable flag is that we have defined a, a young metadata annotation, which we call immutable. And as well an ability to retrieve it with a query parameter we call with immutable. So this uh, immutable metadata annotation is based on the definition in RFC 7952. And the value is used by a Boolean type to indicate whether a node, a particular node is immutable or not. And the immutability uh, is hierarchically applied to descendant nodes until explicitly overridden by the descendant nodes so that the response size could be largely re reduced by this uh, hierarchy inheritance. And we also define uh, with immutable query parameter uh, to be used in the retrieval operation so that this uh, immutable annotation will not be returned unless explicitly uh, being requested by this parameter. And so that this could avoid breaking the lexic lines 
if lexic clients do not understand the immutable annotation, they would not even use this query parameter. That's they didn't see any changes in their retrieval operations. So this is now a single solution with a metadata annotation, and people might uh, recall that we used to have a young extension definition uh, to be a joint solution uh, used to collectively uh, express the immutability, but the young extension is now uh, not is not available now because the some people have concerned that the young extension is is prescriptive, and the server's behavior uh, follows the the young module definition. So this goes against with our. Uh, our intention that we want this immutable flag to be uh, descriptive. So the logic is opposite. That's the young extension has been removed from the latest version of the draft. And then this slide gives an example of how this immutable annotation could be requested and, uh, and returned. The, so here we use some uh, XML snippets to show that how like the uh, netconf client could request to uh, some configuration like application in this case, uh, which is a list. And uh, it also use uh, with origin and with immutable uh, parameter to retrieve the operational data store and the the, the servers will reply the related application configuration. And in this case, we would have two instances of the application node. And the first is the system defined application instance, which is uh, specified with some underlying protocol and default port number predefined by the server with the expect expectation that this might be referenced by clients. So the servers would like to protect this application entry from being modified by the clients. That is a uh, system defined configuration and immutable, immutable. And the client might need to uh, want to define their own uh, application. So they can uh, define the application with different name like my SSH with the their favorite port number which is different from the system defined ones so in this case the the client defined um, configuration is Im immutable is first so it's it's allowed to be added modified and deleted but the the server defined one would be immutable so this is also the case where at least have a uh, and have some entries and different entries. Some, some instances are immutable while others are not. Kent. Uh, yes, as a contributor. Um, so on the previous slide, you mentioned that the, Im the immutable flag was uh, hierarchical. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure what the default is, but the above the two application elements are the is the applications plural node. And I don't see the flag specified there. I'm assuming the default is false. And, and if that's true, then the second application element where it says immutable equals false is probably not needed. Would that, is that a true statement? Uh, right, yes. So it if it's not there, then it will inherit it the immutability of its parent node, which is the application's container, right? And the container, which uh, the, the immutability by default of the top level node, if not specified, would be false. So this doesn't have to be explicitly specified for the second application instance, which is would be false by default. OK, thank you. Yes. Jason? Um, I guess similar to Kent's uh, question, um, it, the um, immutable property is inherited. Mm -hmm. Does the draft 
and the draft recommends that it does not need to be specified if it's inheriting from its parent. Um, do we, uh, is the intention that you must not specify it? I guess I'm kind of wondering related to Ken's comment, is it actually incorrect to show it against that second application tag? And instead we should just have a note on the side saying this is inherited false from the parent. Like, do we, do we want to preclude um, mentioning it or is, or is a client allowed to put this property on every single element if it wants to? I don't know if it's a question for the authors or maybe for the group or for discussion. Okay, Ken. Mm -hmm. I'll join that discussion. Um, th this particular case is the response from the server and it would be in the server's interest to make it be as sparse of a response as it can be. Uh, and so uh, not including um, or re repeating the immutability that was inherited, it would be desirable. And so I think in this case, this the second immutable false should be removed or I mean, the server wouldn't return it. I don't think it's necessarily error. Um, you mentioned, can the client specify that it's that's never the case. It's uh, the clients, I suppose, could uh, Sorry, put I meant it. server. The, the, oh, OK. Yeah, yeah I meant okay. server. My yeah, OK, but still, nonetheless, I mean, to your point, many people will take a snippet of config that they uh, got from the server and then immediately feed it right back into an edit config and push it to the server. So I think it'd be, um, you know, we need to have some language around the server not accepting that or basically ignoring any immutable um, flags that gets pushed to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I understand this uh, immutable, immutability concept when it comes to clients. Immutable means clients can change this. But my question is, how much can a server change what's immutable? Can it never change? Or change only at software update? Or can the server change the content of immutable? Generally, we would not like this immutability uh, to be changed very frequently. And now there is a statement in the draft that this can only be changed by some Event system events like this software upgrade and license change, and some something like that, some like system events. So I think by this way, maybe uh, it could be make sure that the client configuration could be independent of this. Uh, I mean, it will not be uh, rely on the the immutability to decide whether the configuration would be invalid or not. So, I mean, this SSH TCP 22 thing, it would be there until the next software update. I get you correct? Yes. That's my assumption. Yeah. And and supposing that we have this immutable and true keeping SSH TCP uh, port to, uh, as immutable, would it be possible to have some other fields under this immutable that are, that are mutable? I mean, immutable faults under this and immutable true? Let's say that we want to change the port to be mutable. Would that be a possibility? So you mean the server, you, you said we, you mean the server would change this immutable to be mutable, right? Yes, would it be, would it be legal for from some server to say immutable true, SSH is immutable, PCP is immutable, but port number is actually <laughs> immutable false. Is that possible? Yes, this. Um, so the, the the port number is uh, allowed to uh, override this parent node immutability. That's possible. Okay. Yeah, I can sort of live with that if I'm really confident that the SSH and TCP are never changing, then so that only software updates can change the immutability. Because here we're getting into very sensitive areas. One of the key cornerstones for inventing Yang and NetConf and all these things 
was to get rid of transient configuration as it exists in SNMP. And now we are getting close to the border. But if we can rely, if we have to make sure that this language about <laughs> under which conditions things can change when things are marked as mutable to only be software upgrades, I think we can live with it. But we need to look at that language so that we never experienced that these things change in the field. Okay, thank you. Jason? Um, so I so had comments uh, on this on this new topic from Yan and then back to, to Kent's. So first on, on Yan's. So the draft at the moment is not completely prescriptive about which situations a server is allowed to change uh, the immutability of a node uh, or about when it's allowed to um, actually um, change the value of an immutable node or change the immutability of a node. So it, I know the draft gives examples. It says, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't change a value of an immutable node, but it's allowed to. It shouldn't change whether a node is immutable or not, but it's allowed to. And it says it should kind of only be done for things like software upgrade and license change. So I guess it's another question is how, how strict do we want to be in the draft? Are we going to, and I can see problems either way. Um, if we leave it open, then servers, you know, different server implementers will justify their reasons for why it needed to change dynamically from the server. Um, but if we close it to a very specific set of situations, uh, you know, it's it's hard to know what other reasonable situations it may actually be kind of make sense to allow the server to change it. But but just to be clear, the draft does, yeah, and the draft currently does allow the system to change both the value of an immutable node and it allows it to change the immutability of a node. Um, I'm not sure we may want to discuss further how that applies to running versus system. Um, maybe I'll come back. <laughs> you know what? I think I'll come back after uh, to to the inheritance part uh, that we started with Kent. Um, we should probably try to finish one part of the discussion and then go back. So I'll wait for the, I'll, I'll go back in the queue for that comment. I think I'm next in queue. Um, Kent as a contributor, the, um, I think the draft uses language. It does mention software upgrade license and thirdly hardware upgrade. So it, and I think it has exactly those three, whether or not it uses a word like, uh, like such events or exactly just only these events. Um, to Jan's point, I think it'd be best to lock it down. And also to Jan's point about um, application being mutable, but port the descendant node being uh, immutable false. I think the draft might refer to this as overriding and um, similar examples might be, for instance, if you have an, uh, a loopback interface or, or some kind of interface, uh, which is fixed by the system, so it's immutable, uh, true, but the MTU of the interface is allowed to be modified, so the MTU is overridable and hence immutable false. Uh, another example would be a system must have a user called root, uh, immutable, true, but root's password, a descendant node, uh, it needs to be modifiable, so hence it's immutable, false. I was just going to pick up on uh, one of Kent's comps there, Rob. Here. So, um, which I think is all fine. I was just looking at how the immutability flag plays with lists, and I think it's, it's a sort of common sense thing is that uh, if it's immutable, it sort of inherits on the list elements themselves, presumably whether you can create and delete list elements, and also onto the children. But it w I was wondering whether it would be helpful to try and split those two behaviors maybe with a separate annotation so it's possible to say uh you can't create or delete list elements but you can modify their children on them um or vice versa you can say that you can add or remove new element new uh list entries but you can't then modify the properties because at the moment those two things are tied together and i wonder if in some scenarios that may end up being um somewhat annoying i guess with the flag you can just but on all, on every single list element is another choice. But I wonder if you considered that and if you had any thoughts. Mm. 
And Shifan, I think the question's to you. Yeah, Shifan, go ahead. I'll, I'll respond after. Yes, I think uh, currently the the we, we define that if a list entry is immutable, then all of these uh, children cannot be uh, created, modified, and deleted. And 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 also the the, the children will inherit the immutability from its uh, the 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 from the its, its parent node. So this is currently what we have defined. And but I, I think uh, whether we want to uh, change the uh, immutability, I mean, the, the order of the, uh, uh, the specific application like entry, maybe that need to be, uh, this that need to be protected by the immutability. That's something maybe uh, need more discussion. Go ahead, Jason. Okay. Um, I guess about about the the list. Maybe I didn't fully follow, Rob. But if a so the the immutability the immutability tag um, it could exist. Um, it can only exist against a list instance, right? A list entry. Uh, like when you look at the encoding in XML, you get you see here in the example. So you, here you can see the the uh, application name SSH list entry is is immutable, but I think I think we already answered the question that individual elements inside the list, uh, it's perfectly valid if the server overrides those and makes them immutable false, right? But I, I might have misunderstood your comment on that. Um, and then uh, back to the inheritance, I guess Kent, you mentioned that. You'd prefer if the second application we remove the immutable equals false um, notifier there. I guess I, I still I still don't know if we've answered my question. That is, is a server perfectly allowed to return the immutable annotation on every single element if it wants to, or must it use proper hierarchical suppression? And uh, maybe a slight corollary to that is, do we want to? Do we just make the default be false, or do we require all top-level elements to have it explicit? Um, and maybe maybe there's some lessons from other annotations and inheritance of properties from 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 Yang that we can leverage there. Uh, just commenting back on some of Jason's comments. So uh, the one you just most most recently mentioned, I would suggest. By default, the top level having immutable equals false should be the default. I think that's that would be generally what I'd expect in terms of configuration. And you in don't terms, have to return it. Yeah, you don't have to return it. In terms okay. of whether it be strict or not, I don't know. I'm on two minds on this. I can see you in terms of the judicial approach to ITF protocols is to be um, strict in what you receive and loose in what you send. Oh, sorry, strict in what you send and loose in what you receive to, to give flexibility here. However, I also know that some of the more recent sort of drafts from the IAB suggested a, a tighter definition of protocols and having less options is makes life easier for both implementers and client and server. So I'm somewhat agnostic to that one. Um, going back to your original question on lists and things, is like, yes, in XML, there's nothing to represent the list itself. So you can't put the, you wouldn't be able to put the annotation on the list. So you are correct from that point of view. Um, I don't know how metadata plays with JSON and where those annotations go. But in JSON, it may be that actually you can put an annotation on the list it, itself. I don't know. Um, so that's the other one we want to consider when we work out how how you report this annotation. Uh, yeah, as a contributor, um, top level default false makes sense and not being strict. I like the uh, introducing the pastels principle of uh, being strict in what you send and uh, you know flexible in what you receive but acknowledge the uh, the options that you mentioned. I was thinking that it would be good to, um, I wouldn't necessarily be, I would model it much after how we do um, X paths um, or, or, you know, like hierarchical paths. So we many times allow for the prefix to a show, but it doesn't have to show. And, and, and so I think allowing it, not forcing it to be strict is probably, you know, be, uh, similar, um, and and regarding lists, 
in this example, the applications node would have to have been a container node. So they wrapped the list inside of container. And, you know, it's kind of best practice, I guess, if quasi best practice, I, 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 I see it both ways. Um, but um, for XML, it's best practice uh, for kind of exactly this reason. It allows you to, uh, well, we traditionally always talked about it being the way that you could delete all list elements in one operation by deleting the, the parent container. Um, and now we're seeing another uh, usefulness for having a, 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 a container wrapping the list element, which is so you can set the immutability of it. Um, and thirdly, uh, one thing not mentioned is if the list is marked as immutable, um, so we said no nodes, no children, descendants can be added, removed. Um, but also if it's an order by user list, it means that they can, the order cannot change, I would imagine. Um, I, I, I'm so, uh, I'm also, um, in favor of making the top level, just be default immutable false, and it does not need to be returned. And also in favor of leaving flexibility for a server, uh, to either, you know, take advantage of the hierarchical, uh, inheritance, or it would be allowed to return it on every element if it wanted to, or needed to in some situation. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of that flexibility. So. We may want to just on the slide in the second application container, we could like circle that in immutable false and put a note saying this is optional um, or something like that. That's one approach we could use there. Um, about um, lists and ordering, um, it's an interesting question. If I guess uh, Rob had raised it earlier, if if you put uh, immutable on the container above the list then I guess it might follow that things cannot be reordered. Uh, the draft should address that. Um, but if there is no top level container above the list, uh, I guess we'll have to decide whether immutable equals true on like the list element itself. Like in this case, the application tags here, if it says immutable true, we'll have to decide if that implies that the order of that item uh, can't be changed. It's a little bit complicated in my mind how you define that, given that other things around it could change. So, but we'll have to maybe uh, define what it means to order, even without a, a container above it. Yes, I agree with Jason. And maybe it would be uh, more straightforward if it's a leaf list. Like if a leaf list instance is immutable matter it means that the order cannot be changed but whether it's the same for the list entry i'm not that sure okay richard yeah so i joined late so i apologize if uh, my question has been addressed already so i see here was looking at your slides you're talking about metadata has is this eventually going to go into Yang next, or is it going to stay the way it is? Okay, as metadata. I'm not going to. Uh, I, I think th this should be uh, not be waited to the Yang next revision, but some 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 something that could be complementary with the. Uh, another work we, which we discussed two weeks ago, we call system configuration, some um, complementary to the system configuration to declare its immutability. Okay. Um, but uh, I forget who was mentioning, I think it was Jason saying we need clarification. I'm jumping to a different thing now about whether list entries should be mutable. I mean, I don't think it makes sense to not allow ordering, but allow list entries to be mutable. But I have to admit, I haven't thought about this extensively. Just, I just don't see use case where you'd say, I can't reorder them, but I want to be able to up update an entry. 
Okay. But just Can to clarify, I was mm -hmm. I, I wasn't I wasn't implying that. Sorry if I caused some confusion. I was more just wondering if the immutable flag as it is with its current meaning also applies to order. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Kent, as a contributor, um, I don't want to hijack the, the topic, but, you know, Rashad mentioned Yang next, and, um, and I'm not sure, you know, it, it, I mean, Shafan's response was on point. Uh, we don't really want to speculate what Yang next would be about, but I think Rashad's comment was more uh, speculating if the using of metadata here would be uh, the long-term solution, like, like, and and to that, if that's the question, I think that Yang next would carry forward the notion of metadata. In fact, it it probably make it a built-in part of the Yang language, as opposed to right now it's being defined as a separate RFC, um, and 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 that furthermore uh, the use of the metadata for this purpose, returning immutability, would also be the long-term strategy. Thank you, Kent. OK. OK, Jason. Um, I guess back to, um, I'm not sure if we resolved uh, an answer for whether immutable changes uh, allows changing of order. Uh, so we should we should probably discuss that a bit more. Um, I'm 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 not sure I can see how that can work. Like if you have three items in a list and the middle one says immutable true, um, I don't know how we can define that. That means its order can't change because I'm allowed to delete or remove entries above it. Uh, I'm allowed to delete and remove entries below it because those ones are not those are marked immutable false. I can swap the one above and below it because they're both immutable false. So <laughs> I think it's actually difficult to define. Uh, it would be difficult to 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 say immutable means you can't change the order. Um, and maybe related to it is a discussion that has come up a couple times here that applies both to lists and leaf lists. There's a note in leaf lists that if every single element, because you can't mark an overall leaf list uh, in XML, um, you can just mark each each entry in the leaf list uh, in, in XML encoding. So you can't mark an overall leaf list with any sort of property. Um, but there is a note in the draft that says if every single element is marked with immutable true, then that somehow uh, causes the whole leaf list to be immutable and you're not allowed to add any further elements. Um, I don't know if the same would then apply to lists. Um, but I think this might this might be kind of a little bit of overlap with this discussion about about ordering. Like the elements you've defined and said are immutable true. It's not clear how that whether that should or can really infer anything about other elements in that list or leaf list. I I kind of feel like maybe it should not. Um, and I, I guess I'm questioning a little bit the the concept that um, if all leaf list elements are marked um, immutable true that you're not allowed to add further elements to it uh, I'm not I'm not sure we I'm not sure that's that's what we want to do oops I just want to say I agree with Jason it's probably not actually needed either for the use cases that were listed in the document there are no such cases where it's important to prevent moving entries around, I believe. What do you say, Shufan? OK, I I tend to agree, agree with that. Jason? OK, so I, 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 I guess I agree with that as well. So the proposal on the table is that this immutable flag has no bearing on order of user ordered lists or leaf list entries. Um, but the second question is, if every entry in a leaf list or list is immutable true, does that uh, block, does that imply that no further entries 
either list entries or leaf list entries can be added in there. Uh, I'm not as sure, but I kind of lean towards saying it does not prevent that. In other words, there is no, this mechanism does not kind of limit or prevent adding other entries into a list or leaf list. Kent. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so I don't know if I agree with that at all um, about it not impacting the ordering or limiting the ability for clients to reorder. I mean, you have to ask, like, why is there such thing as order by user uh, lists in the first place? And, and you know, the classical scenario is a firewall uh, policy rule base or, you know, where there's a sequence of things that they need to be interpreted in that order and uh, allowing um, clients to change the order doesn't make any sense at all. So uh, I kind of struggle with um, that. I think that um, we would need to... Uh, I, I, the it, XML encoding is is the problem. It is the challenge. I mean, in if it's JSON encoding only, there's no issue with being able to annotate the um, the list element itself. Um, and but in XML, you know, unfortunately, uh, 7951, I think it's maybe it's 52, doesn't give the uh, detail. But this draft could say um, that if it's set on the parent container, then even though it's not the kind of thing that would be normally, uh, I mean, if it like maybe if it's the only container, um, if it's the only descendant of that parent container, then it has the similar effect or something like that. Um, but I mean, as I think the current draft it is fairly specific about the, and making a distinction between what it means when the list element itself is immutable versus when the items inside the list are immutable. And, uh, it, you know, I think those are two different cases and the document, uh, the current document captures them as two different cases. Um, so a few things on there, um, I guess, I'm not super excited about having some exception to the behavior that kind of depends on the fact that you've created a special container to contain just your list. Um, that just feels uncomfortable to me. Uh, I, I, I guess if, 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 if we were to do this, um, I don't think we'd want special rules that it only apply if the list is the only item in a container. Uh, it should job probably just be some general inheritance that if the list is inside a container, whether there's other sibling elements to the list or not. Um, and then I guess uh, even e e so with XML encoding, there's no there's no top level list entry and other encodings there might be, but I think we might still run into. So it is true you can give an overall property then to a list maybe in in some other encodings, but. Um, I'm not sure if that's necessarily all the use cases is to give that same property uh, that would allow immutability or reordering to the entire list. Because I think a lot of the use cases here are actually more that there's a list that has user defined elements and system defined elements in it. It's a mix. And I guess I guess I can resonate a little bit with the firewall thing, uh, Kent. Um, I mean, if there's some system created entries in there, maybe the system wants them to be the first three entries in the list uh, and not for anything to change. Um, but I, I still wonder the, whether that should be outside the scope of this annotation and that's just the error, the server would just error. It's not, I'm not, I'm not sure we can describe that with this annotation, maybe. The other thing to consider is in a mix of immutable and mutable entries in a list, if we want the ordering property to be controlled, is that just amongst the immutable elements and their relationship to each other? Or is that with relation to any other immutable or non-immutable entries? It just, it gets into a bit of a tangle in my mind. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. Um, it is a tangle, and you're right about that. And good thing we're only talking about adopting the draft now, and there's plenty of time for the working group to, to work on it. Uh, these are some complex, um, interesting problems. Um, and also, I want to retract what I said before about the special case, uh, the parent container. I, I, it's actually not needed. You're right. It, the, uh, even though the XML encoding doesn't um, uh, support the list itself being there, it is implicitly there uh, in the model, the data model, the conceptual data model, and it is implicitly receiving or inheriting immutability from a parent, whatever its parent is, in this example, the, the, the node applications, plural. Um, and all we're really talking about, so it's not, it's not affecting, um, okay, wh what it affects is the ability for the server to express that um, the, immutability, the immutability of the list itself uh, toggled between it and its parent. Um, that applications was, for instance, immutable uh, false, um, but the but the uh, list element, which is not present on the screen, is mutable true, true, <laughs> right, or something like that. It, it toggled, and it can't it can't express the fact that it toggled. Um, but and and that's then so it, it, there's no violation of rules. Uh, it's just saying that it's not expressible. Um, and then what well, is kind of right? The, like it would just appear on every list element. It, right. Maybe that's the. Uh, I don't know, but the um, I think that would then go to best practice, right? So it's not we're not saying that there's a special rules or, or, or that are in play, but then the best practice is that you wrap your lists inside dedicated containers if wanting to express them in XML. Yeah, I, I maybe I'm 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 not sure I'm totally in favor of going back to this best practice of wrapping this around. I think you're right; it can't be expressible in one single line. Like you can't show applications is immutable, false, immutable, true, and then the entire list is immutable, false. But it is expressible in a way. Just you know, every if that was the case, then just every application line here would show immutable false. So you can still return the data. It's just it's returned on every single list uh, list element instead of one kind of top level list element. I'm not sure that's the end of the world. Uh, let's park this for now. Um, we're on slide five of nine, so maybe we can get to the next slide. Okay. So, okay. So from this slide, I uh, will properly present some uh, candidate solutions that has already um, been touched before by some folks from the working group, but uh, be dismissed by the authors. So I will. Uh, present why I why we are not uh, choose to use that, and the first is uh, NAC. Um, NAC refers to the network configuration access control module, and the, the the there are a lot of restrictions with NAC to uh, we, if we use the NAC rules to express the immutability. The restrictions is that NAC sometimes can be disabled by setting the enable NAC configuration to first. And NAC can also be bypassed by emergency recovery, re recovery session. And the most important is that um, we, we can have NAC rules to declare the immutability, but the rules themselves should also be immutable and cannot be uh, modified by the client. And while the rules usually can be overridden by adding new uh, rules before existing rules are matched. So this is something I think uh, the restrictions about NAC. And 
The second is about the no tax, which refers to the solution. Uh, there is an ongoing draft has already adopted by the working group in um, about the no tax mechanism. But this no tax uh, is not preferred as immutable tax uh, is returned by reading a separate no tax module. So we would like the immutability to be returned with the 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 the, the, data, the nodes instead of uh, reading a separate module to get that immutability information. And also, tax is something that can be controlled by the client. It can be removed from the operational state by add, adding it to the masked tax entry, while immutability is something cannot be controlled by the client. So this is. Uh, why not no tax? And also the young deviation statement, uh, which defines the way a server deviates from a standard, this is also pr not preferred uh, for immutability, which is not an implementation limitation caused by server software or hardware ability. It's more like a, a node property uh, of immutability and also we cannot use young deviation to deviate the mutability property of the uh, system defined configuration especially the instance level of immutability this cannot be achieved by young deviation okay so then we have the uh, this is i think this is the last slide of this presentation and uh, it's about whether this draft is ready for adoption. So I guess let me just pause here and uh, see if any other comments and concerns. Jason? Hi. Uh, yeah, I still have a couple more discussion items, um, which may, may be kind of interesting. Um, I guess, um, well, we should maybe come back to it, but we never, I don't know if we ever finished discussing and, and maybe, maybe Kent's right on this. It could be tabled for, for later, but while we have people on the call, it may be useful. Like, I don't think we ever solve the fact that if all leaf uh, list. Yeah. Hi, just quickly. I mean, yeah. um, we're only, we're less than halfway through. There's okay. plenty of time for discussion. I just wanted to ensure that, um, Siobhan had an opportunity to get through her slides. And, uh, now okay. that we uh, have gotten to the end, uh, circling back on things and focusing on them. Um, you're right. We have uh, everyone on the line, so excellent opportunity. Uh, let's move forward with uh, you know drilling down into items. Um, okay. and we'll come back Great. to that last slide. Um, I'll do a show of hands poll at the at the end, um, and it won't necessarily be the end, but at least it'll be the beginning of a, a new discussion. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Jason. I would. I I would I would I would recommend we have a bit more discussion before we necessarily make the the call for adoption. Like we might as well do that a little just a little bit more as things are wrapping up, uh, just so other other discussions can happen. Um, the uh, so so I guess the first one is the the item about if all leaf list elements are marked immutable. Does that does that uh, does that by definition mean that no further leaf list entries can be added? And then I would also wonder if if that would apply then to lists and why it wouldn't then also apply to lists. Uh, maybe I, I, I guess I'm a little bit on the doubtful side about uh, when, when individual leaf list entries or, or individual list entries are marked immutable, I can see how that entry maybe is not allowed to be added removed or uh, modified uh, but I find it I guess I find it a little bit odd that there's this property that if all of the entries are immutable it means you can't add any further entries uh, I'm just not I'm not sure I really love that corollary I, it may just have to be implementation specific in other words not I would almost say that we just we don't we don't say that in this draft. And if a server wants to refuse further entries, that's fine. But it's not the fact that the other all the six entries already there are immutable that it implies that necessarily. Yeah, I can I can see use cases where there may happen to only be immutable entries in a list to start, but uh, the client's still allowed to add entries. 
especially for a list. Uh, quickly, uh, Jason, can you clarify? Are you speaking um, about the XML representation, the, the issue? Is it an XML representation uh, specific comment? No. Or? No, so I, I don't think it's related to encoding at all. I think just it's just conceptually in the draft, it says if every leaf list entry is marked immutable, then it means that no further leaf list entries can be added. I, I think that's independent of encoding. Um, and that's the one I'm questioning and I have my doubts. Uh, again, coming back to the use case that I think there may be cases where a server boots up and the only content of a leaf list or a list is say a single or a couple of immutable system entries. Uh, I wouldn't want that to by our draft preclude that a client can add entries to a list that or leaf list that uh, is already populated purely with immutable entries. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize that was in the draft that uh, if each of the list items are uh, one thing, then it means that they all are, or I didn't I, actually, I, I think I'm going to have to go offline or, or not offline, but you know, to a different window real fast to look that up. Um, I thought at first it was going to be an XML specific encoding concern. Um, and so I thought I'd take another whack at that. And how can we uh, enable the server expresses through XML encoding? And it was actually when Chiffon presented her last three slides, the one with node tags. Um, you know, I, I agree with the current proposal of kind of inlining it into the response uh, payload uh, using the with immutable um, input query parameter, uh, so the clients can you know select to return it, and all that looks great. Um, uh, but there's this one issue of how to encode the immutability in xml uh the of list and list leak list uh, themselves and with that then maybe it says the draft says that node tags are used like it's not the preferred solution but it's a possible solution um you know for the most part you never have to use node tags but if you really really want to find out about the lists and leaf lists themselves then a node tag lookup could be used to resolve it Okay, Yen. Yeah, so uh, together with this observation by Jason, if we had a list where all of the, or some of the entries were marked uh, immutable, true, and there was a few that were immutable false, uh, those that are immutable false, we can obviously delete. And when we deleted them, that list would suddenly be, at least with all, all entries immutable true, and suddenly you couldn't add more interest to it. At least that's the perception from the client, I suppose. So this sort of uh, arrangement is probably not reasonable. But maybe we should go back and see. Right now we are discussing a mechanism where immutability is conveyed entirely by attributes, as I understand it. But maybe we need a combination. We have some extension statement in Yang, for example, you can apply that to a list. I would say tell the client something that, yeah, in this list we allow or don't allow additional entries. And so you can and then you can have individual attributes for individual list entries as well. But I think we might need both. I think conceptually we could need both, especially to address, especially to address things like uh, some of these reordering, as reordering allowed that we've been asking, um, and whether you're allowed to add entries, but. I'd also think it may be valid for us to consider just not having those in scope. Like if we look at the key use cases, maybe it's good enough for this draft that we don't have a way to indicate uh, stuff for the list overall or reordering. Um, I think we should consider that, that it may be good enough what we've defined that individual list entries have properties individual leaf list entries have properties and there is no concept of an overall property for the list that's any different than each individual list entry having that same property
Actually, I've been putting comments in the chat, but um, so I was just going to say, you could potentially use two separate attributes here. One for the sort of uh, descendant properties versus the properties of the list itself, whichever way around you're to define those, what the default is, what the current, the immutable flag means. Uh, but I also plus on to Jason's comment that actually it may be over engineering the solution and for what's required, it may be a single flag is enough and you don't have as quite as much flexibility as you want. I think the case that I was thinking of, and I think this has come up in like the NACAM circles, was when uh, I can't remember if it was IEEE or one of the other SDOs, they wanted to be able to say um, a particular user has the ability to, I can't remember which way around it was, add or remove elements for this, but they can't modify the elements that are there or, or vice versa. So they definitely wanted a difference in behavior between uh, modifications of the list structure versus modifications of the elements within the list. And hence, I'm just wondering if we don't do anything here, whether we'll hit that same issue. Um, so I definitely think it's worth flagging as an issue for discussion at some point. Um, I I agree with actually both uh, what Jason and Robert just said. Um, the uh, I mean, first to Jason, like I, I mean, I, I if we completely exclude the ability for to ever express even in JSON uh, encoding the immutability of lists, that like we it's not possible in any encoding, and all interpretation is derived from the immutability of the list items. Um, that is a complete solution. It works for all encodings. Um, you know, what would the fallout of that be? How, um, you know, to, to uh, Robert's point just now, um, 3GPP were hoping to affect the structure of the list, uh, not specifically the items themselves. So perhaps it wouldn't lend to that um, solution, but it's worth considering it. it I mean, it's, uh, it solves the problem of it. there's no special cases. <laughs> I, like, I like it for that reason. Um, but the, uh, Robert brings up a good point. And, and also the point about possibly having different uh, attribute, right? Right now we're just having one attribute called immutable. Uh, maybe there's a different like spe list specific attributes like list immutable. And there's actually two separate attributes that are hierarchically, you know, d descending through the tree. Um, and, and the second attribute is only specific or makes sense or useful to lists, but it has some uh, expression that allows us to express something that we can't just express the simple boolean that's coming out of the um, immutable annotation. And um, let me see. I think I'll stop for now. I'll get back in queue in a second. Yeah, I can. So, from a technical point of view, uh, I I think maybe that that could be a solution is have something different that applies to lists uh maybe it applies to leaf lists as well um and it it would you know we could have separate semantics for that tag that you know solve some of these questions we have um it's not simple though right it's like uh can you reorder lists can you only can you only reorder the non-immutable items etc uh, so it, it may get complicated so i think it's technically possible but i i guess i'm still leaning a little bit towards keeping it out of scope um the downside i don't think the downside is huge keeping it out of scope like when we think about it here i mean things work today it's uh, the server will just refuse what it's not allowed the client developer yes it's a surprise they'll have to go read the documentation and you know re rework their clients to work around some of these issues the same way they will once we add this tag uh you know th they're still gonna have to encode some of these rules these new rules about how to interact with these servers that have immutable data um so you know if there's some more cornery cases that we can't describe with annotations or in the model but the server just returns an error and it's in the documentation maybe so be it so i, I guess i am interested in how important this use case is that's i guess rob mentions from scott uh, about about some of these cases we're talking about that can't can't be described as individual immutable flags against the elements. Okay, so we the purpose of this is to provide extra documentation for the clients so they can avoid uh, unnecessary errors. 
it um so already the clients have to deal with the fact that the server can return an error um but now the idea is that they can get more documentation and avoid a number of those cases um so if a solution is not complete um it's not the end of the world. It, I mean, it's maybe a 99% solution, but you know, there's some weird cases that uh, are not completely covered. Um, I, f I would find that unfortunate. Uh, I would rather see a complete solution of some sort. Um, and, and then also, I just want to circle back a, a little bit ago, there was a concept of using um, a Yang extension uh, to, you know, support or, you know, express things that aren't expressible solely through metadata and just wanted to highlight I, Stefan said this at the very beginning or earlier that uh, the previous version of the draft had a Yang extension statement it was taken out and um, the she said uh, very eloquently that it was taken out because of concerns about the solution being prescriptive as opposed to uh, just simply descriptive um, and I think that makes a lot of sense the um but that's not the only reason it was taken out uh i think also it wasn't a complete solution so what i mean is um with metadata it's impossible to express um it's a complete solution it, you can you can express the mutability of the entire tree uh using metadata but with a scheme a scheme extension alone like for instance, if you have a heterogeneous list where some of the list items are can be immutable and others are, cannot be immutable, like this isn't something that's expressible in the Yang schema. If you just you know the flag is immutable, true or false in the Yang schema, and it, it it wasn't possible to express heterogeneous lists that way. So it was taken out um, also not only because concerns of it being prescriptive, but also because it wasn't a complete solution. Yes, and the, the the other reason might be that I try to find some young modules that published by ITF, but I didn't find any um, that would probably use this immutable young extension. So maybe ITF shouldn't define it. So I was going to try and move the conversation on to a slightly different one. Uh, again, this was as a contributor. So, uh, and it sort of picks up on one of the points that Kent was making. And my question is about um, what this draft should or does say about interactions with the running configuration data store. And also uh, what, if anything, does or should it say about like edit config requests? And I, so I think the questions I have is, can you make a request for, uh, this immutable um, annotation on running, is that a meaningful thing to ask or not? Uh, and if so, what does it return? And in terms of edit config requests is, does it have any interplay at all? So if something's marked as immutable in running, does that mean that if a client tries to delete that configuration from running, that the server may turn around and say, no, it can't do that? Um, or, or does it just say nothing about running at all or the edit config requests and hence, is sort of out of scope in terms of what's being tried to what's being defined here. So um, I don't have any issues in terms of the specification providing just like a descriptive behavior. It's just how do we avoid that descriptive behavior then being used to modify how uh, the operations work is what my concern is or question is. Okay. So regarding the uh, immutable Im immutability with the uh, inter how to interact with the running data store. So since the immutable configuration can only be created by system in system configuration that's present in system data store. So it will not be present in running by default, but the client might be uh, copy it. I mean, right, if it right, like write a, a, a same value, copy it into running and in this way, if it retrieves running, then th this configuration might be returned with the immutable equals true. And this just means that this value cannot be overridden. Like, like a different value to override this is not allowed, but this can be deleted from running. Just like the, 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 the client uh, 
make it visible in running and then can delete it means like make it invisible in running. So it can be deleted from running and can also be created with the same value in running. So, okay, on that one, I think that that would be really helpful for the draft to be very explicit on that behavior. Um, so I think that's probably okay. Uh, but I think it, the draft should, should be very explicit as to what what's allowed and what it's um, and what semantics are there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, on this latest uh, discussion here, so I think it's also valid for a server to have this uh, system uh, immutable through things in running when the system first starts up. As it, that means from the factory. So it could be there for all the way from the beginning and just stay there in running. Right. Uh, yes. But the, but the thing I wanted to comment on really was this, uh, when you have this immutable true and false attributes on, on things, that means, I mean, there's something that you cannot express that idea in uh, by extension in the Yang schema. But uh, the other way around is also true. Uh, these attributes can only express things about things that are in the current configuration and not about things that could potentially be there. Like if you want to add things or remove things that, I mean, sorry, add things that are not there now, that cannot be expressed by attributes. So there's a sort of duality between things that you have in the schema and things that you have on the actual configuration list items. Okay, Jason. Chu Feng, do you, do you want to respond to that? Because mine, I'm going back to a slightly different topic. So Jan's, I guess, talking about maybe the need, the potential need for, for schema extensions versus instance data annotations. Okay, maybe, um, yes, maybe first let's discuss whether we would like to uh, use the extension to express the schema level immutability. I, I, we, we used to have this before, but as, as I, I mentioned earlier, I, we have removed it because of some concern that this is, the young extension is proscriptive. So um, I, I'm not sure that uh, that, would be needed, so maybe needs we need more discussion about that. Let me comment there. So, I mean, if a server is going to re reject creation of new instances in a particular list, that cannot be expressed with attributes. And if you want to be able to express that, it has to go into schema. And I don't see why an extension statement would be more problematic than the current situation where the server is free to reject it anyway. So, I don't think that there's and a new prescri prescribability <laughs> uh, that is being added here by this okay. extension statement. But uh, yeah. OK. Thank you. Jason? Um, I guess I'm, uh, I'm going back to uh, two topics. Well, <laughs> I don't know if other people are finding this, but there's not a ton of us, and we um, because of this queue structure, we keep end up kind of getting halfway through conversations and jumping to another one. It's it's kind of it's feeling slightly awkward. But so maybe people should I don't know if maybe people should feel more willing to jump in when we're in the middle of a topic uh, to drive it to more to conclusion. Uh, Jason, <laughs> do you, you wish to change it. the topic right now? We're talking about the extension schema. Uh, that is the topic. Are yeah. You to the topic? Yes, I was because the previous okay, one was that. about. Let, let's wait until. Um, uh, okay. There's anyone else that, that has anything they want to say about the extension schema topic, and then we'll sure. move. Sure. The then I one. want to go back to one that I was going to comment on before this one. Came yeah, up. yeah. Right. I'm holding on to a few thoughts as well, but yeah, let's make sure we get through one topic at a time. So right now we're doing the extension schema topic. Okay, I will. I will comment on that one. Uh, then the um, uh, you know, Robert earlier proposed that maybe there's a different, you know, a different sort of tag. Uh, that applies to whether uh, an overall list can have entries added or reordered or things like that. Um, when he was talking about that overall tag, I guess since it, that can't be expressed in XML, I, I guess we'd be talking about it as maybe a schema extension. Um, 
I don't know if if anyone has some other thoughts on how you express in all encodings, including XML, some sort of property of the overall list. I don't I don't I don't think that works. So if we wanted that, I guess uh, I can I can see how an extension might make sense. Um, it's it, the yeah the problem is it's defined as as part of the schema, and so a server doesn't have an option of like different servers couldn't have the option of advertising different behavior for the list on their implementation. Um, and I guess that's where maybe the, the, the tags idea could be considered. Uh, but I still come back to, I'd like to hear, unfortunately the three GPP folks aren't on, you know, what are these use cases really important? Like I, I know our, our annotation against individual list entries, uh, definitely matches some of the use cases being described. Um, I just I I still wonder whether we're you know agonizing over a, a corner case here that should be maybe a maybe that could be a follow up work. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, so on the uh, extension statement. Uh, okay, Jan uh, was on point about the uh, the duality nature. That's I hadn't thought. I mean, of course, it's obvious now. That's been said, but um, but in I, in theory, it's true. In practice, I wonder if so. And the reason why I say is because I would imagine that uh, any such lists uh, that the server is thinking or or element uh, really uh, that's um, hasn't been configured, uh, but the server that'd be like system defined configuration. It would it would appear in the system data store, and could be discoverable uh, by the client. You know, assuming the server implements the system data store, but the client could do uh, get on that, and then with the with immutable flag and discover the immutability of um, information that actually hasn't been configured yet in running. I think I, I think I remember Balash saying though that uh, he was keen for this immutable flag, and as part of why it was separated out from System Data Store, that it could exist. This concept could exist on its own without System Data Store, because um, I think maybe I, I assume he's thinking that there may be some three GPP server implementations that would not have System Data Store necessarily, but may still have immutable data that appears in their running, whether, you know, whether that's, uh, there's probably, you know, various opinions, whether that's good practice or not, but, uh, you know, I think some implementations may do that. Uh, so that's, that may not, f I'm not, I'm not positive we could fully necessarily rely on, on the system data store to express that information, but no, it doesn't have to be system, can also be operational. If we don't have system, then we don't have system data store, but we can still have system configuration be present in operational. So if you retrieve operational, you can still get the similar information. I thought that was only if it's actually used though, or like in use uh, or something? Yes, yes, in use. Yeah, and I was going to say uh, intended as an, another possible location where um, data store that could return the immutability of nodes, but uh, in intended, that's bef that's before what is in use has been called, and so it avoids the concern just raised about operational. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, sorry, any more comments about this topic, ex extension schema? If not, then um, I'll call on Jason to bring up his next topic. 
So it, it sounds, uh, yeah, it sounds like we're just going to shelve that one um, for a moment. Um, I guess I'm going back to, there was some discussion about, I guess I was just looking for clarification a little bit. Um, there was discussion that you can, you, I, I think we were leaning towards being able to get the sanitation from running. So there's some cases where you might read, read from running and you might have, um, if I understand correctly, you could, you could have some, say a list instance that says immutable true, but you're actually allowed to delete it because it had the same value as it had in the system data store. Similarly, you're allowed to create it uh, as long as it has the same values in the system data store. Um, yes. Is that does that does that kind of imply? I'm, I'm not I'm not sure. But does that imply that immutable data in the running can always be deleted? Because uh, doesn't it doesn't immutable data only ever enter the running? by copying it from the system? So immutable data can only be system configuration, right? Then that should be present in system data store and will not be present in running by default. So uh, it will not be present in running unless being explicitly copied into running. And then Would you can delete it. Yeah, you can delete it. And even you delete it, the system will still, uh, the data store will still be merged into intended. And that value will still be in use by the device if it can be applied successfully because it's in intended data store. Anyway, system will be merged into intended. So even you delete it, from running and can still be present in intended and maybe present in operational as well if it's in use. Okay, but I, th I think what follows is that, and I don't know if this is gonna match with, with Balazs' thoughts from 3GPP that maybe doesn't have system data store, but it sounds like by that definition, anything marked immutable and running can always be deleted. or maybe I reverse it. Does anyone know of a scenario where there's something marked immutable and running and you cannot delete it? Because I'm not seeing that in the from this discussion. No, I don't see any such case. Okay, so okay, I guess that's kind of good because I was I was where I was getting to was that it was going to be confusing for a client to maybe that there are some entries marked immutable that can be deleted and some that can't, but it sounds uniform. I think we'll want to confirm with, with Balash and the 3GPP guys if this is also their vision because I'm pretty sure if I I I have the feeling that I told Balash, yeah, anything in running marked immutable can always be deleted. Uh, he would immediately say no, but maybe maybe just. Uh, Maybe just have to work through these corollaries. I'm thinking maybe um, Blush was thinking some cases where the immutable configuration is not system configuration. Maybe uh, s something similar to the uh, statement in 3GPP liaison that says that something like the configuration can uh, cannot be uh, modified directly but can be deleted and then recreate with a, a different value so that's in this case it's not the system configuration it's configuration created by the client does that mean we're not addressing a use case that was important to 3gpp or, uh, like um, are they expecting a solution to that but we're not providing it we are trying to dismiss this use case for some transactional API consideration. So this is something we decide not to support it. Okay. Ken. I hate to speak for 3GPP, but they're not here. <laughs> and so I'll do my best to, um, you know, put a bow around this of some sort. Uh, I mean, I think 
Okay, so what this draft is saying is that it allows for discoverability of the you know the immutable status of notes. Um, it it doesn't at, it doesn't say anything about you know uh, whether or not things can be deleted from running or not. And, you know if they're immutable be, because they can be fetched from system. It just it doesn't say anything. It's a it's a vacuum uh, in terms of, you know it, it it's mute on that point. Um, so you know if uh, and I, and I don't. I'm I'm saying this, and, and I, I'm not promoting it. It's a use case I don't actually uh, uh, support directly uh, because I think, uh, you know, going back to what Jan said a long time back about wanting transactional API. Um, but in three GPP case, if a node got created, um, and then the client said, you know, give me the information with immutable, and the server returns and it says, oh, well, I just flagged it as immutable. Um, I mean, this draft supports that. It supports the discoverability of the immutability status of nodes, regardless of how they got created. So so it, in my mind, it half supports the 3GPP um, use case. Um, the other half of what they're wanting is, if I understand it correct, is some ability for the client to um, do so something. It's it actually, it's, it's transactional. It's a, uh, it's a non-transactional uh, type sequence of events. And this draft is not saying anything about supporting that. There's, there's nothing in the edit config request that has any impact on anything that this draft is um, bringing forward. Um, but just it's only on the get operation. So clients can discover and how those nodes got created is outside scope. I agree. It's unfortunate that Galash and other people with stronger 3GP um, commitment are not here. Uh, but I have spent a considerable uh, number of hours in 3GP as well. And uh, I can say immediately that there's no way that we can preserve the fundamental properties of NetConf and Yang uh, and also implement all of the, the ways that 3GP models things. So it, they are internal contradictions between those two. So we have to go uh, a long way towards implementing things that are useful in 3GP4, but they cannot do them all. And in the earlier versions of this draft, uh, some of those uh, use cases uh, were in, but they have been taken out. Yes. Jason? So I guess I, I've, I've looked through the draft, but I, I so I, I didn't realize that we didn't really define that a client may return an error if you try to modify an immutable thing. But I thought I thought earlier in the call, Rob was kind of asking that we <laughs> clarify that in the document. Um, whereas it sounded like maybe there was actually an explicit uh, decision to avoid clarifying, you know, any changes or behavior to an edit, an edit data or an edit config operation, i.e. erroring when it tries to create, delete, or modify an immutable. So I guess maybe an open question or a question back to Rob, just to make sure that, uh, like, are, does that contradict what you were thinking earlier about wanting to define in this draft uh, that you error, that there's an error to an edit data? I I think it's more the other way around. So, so my concern is, um, I don't know which RFC says it, but I think maybe non-netconf RFCs seems to say something along the lines of that a server's allowed to return an error for any reason it likes. And I get the impression that that's being uh, used more heavily than it should have. And then, then it's saying that, well, it allows a server to implement any behavior that you want. And I don't think that that is quite right. I think that there's exceptional things a server might do, run out of memory, et cetera, that are fine for it to just error on. But in terms of the semantics that Yang expects, like an edit config request, I expect that servers so should honor what's in a standard edit config request. And hence, that's my concern in terms of this immutability flag is, is just in terms of not wanting to effectively change the netconf protocol via the back door without explicitly saying it, but you're, it's going to be saying, well, that the the servers can uh, annotate all these different nodes as immutable, and then when a client tries to set them, 
the error is like, no, you can't change it. It's an immutable thing. And it's like, well, that's not what, what the net comp for or Yang specifications really allow for. But they have this, this get out clause that says you're allowed to re reject any conflict change. So that's the bit that I would like to see tightened up and fixed somewhere. I'm not sure this is the right place, but I think it'd be nice in a future version of NetConf for Yang to be a bit more explicit about what sort of errors are allowed and what aren't. Um, that I think that would be helpful because at the moment, if you're allowed to, re to return an error any time, it means that you can make a like a nonsensical server implementation that just does what it likes, does what it likes. Uh, does but that help I, clarify? Listen. Well, I guess are are you so are you comfortable that the draft basically just says here's an annotation, uh, but doesn't really define that a server would error when trying to create or modify uh, an element that was marked with immutable? I I think I'd be comfortable at the level of saying if you try to if you try to change its value, oh, basically, I'd be comfortable if it said that, that this item can either exist with a particular value or, or it can not exist, but it can't, have, it can't exist with any other value. I think that's okay to me and seems reasonable. What I don't like is something that says, uh, you, can, you can delete this value and create it with a new value, but you can't change the value because that to me breaks up trans transactional semantics. It's like, there's no reason as to why we would want to enforce that behavior at the on the client. It just makes it harder, harder to uh, code the client. So that's what I want to avoid is that like transactional behavior. If it's a piece of configuration that says, um, if you try and write a different value to, to this node, it's never gonna succeed, then I think the immutable flag's probably fine for that. I think that's that's okay. Presumably the documentation of the device says you're never gonna be able to change this particular thing. Um, I was thinking applying a pastel's principle to this and the servers being um, literal about what receiving and you know the, th the thinking being is that there's nothing the client can do that would change the immutability property of any node on the server and therefore the a server implementing this draft would be perfectly in its right mind. And in fact, it might be recommended to discard any immutable uh, attribute that comes, any metadata that comes in the uh, edit config request, just discard it. It, it, has, it has no bearing. Um, it doesn't matter like what value it might have. It's irrelevant. It, it, we could go that way. Um, and that really underscores the principle of it's completely server driven. Uh, however, that approach would be less um, amenable to the three GPP approach. Like if we actually want to make it that the server can uh, error, you know, on such cases. So uh, then, then, you know, actually uh, returning the error when the um, when the client tries to change the immutability of something, I think that'd be more in line with what three GPP is hoping for. I, I didn't quite understand the. I, I don't think I was ever suggesting that a client would send um, the immutable annotation into the server. I don't think that that is a good idea. I, I think that the immutability is always a property of the server, so the client would just put in a normal edit config request. If they do a get config request, then I think it's okay for a server to annotate back uh, with with the request with the particular option to say I want to add in this immutability annotation. I think that's okay, but I'm not. I think I agree with you that you should never you should never be able to affect the server behavior by putting that annotation in. I think that sounds very strange. I'm not sure Kent was necessarily implying that. I. And, and maybe I'm bringing up a different point, but I, th I something resonated that Kent said, and that is we we probably don't want to prescribe that a server must error when someone tries to edit this. Um, I think we should actually avoid that. I think a server, 
can advertise this property, uh, a server may reject modifications to that property. But I don't think we, I don't think the draft says it, and I don't think we should say it that a server must reject. Uh, just for, just I can give you one use case as an example. You could have an immutable field inside a list entry, but a server could elect to allow it to be changed by under the hood, destroying and recreating the entity, uh, the list entry. Um, I don't think we'd want to preclude that behavior. Uh, so, yeah, so, Jason, I think I agree with you in the sense that I'm, I'm it's the may that I'm suggesting uh, rather than the must. As in, if you have an immutable flag set, then a, a server may reject, uh, may yeah, reject with that. changing that configuration to have a different value. But I still, I still think it has to say or should be saying um, that that the immutable that the the immutable value is is over the lifetime of that particular uh, package installed or something. As in, you upgrade the device, then it might be it changes what's immutable and what the immutable values are. But you can't come along and say, "I've created a new interface. I I, I configured value ten on this, and then another interface comes along, and I'm going to configure value twenty on that, and they're both immutable. And I can delete the interface and create one with thirty. I don't think that's right. I think you should always have the behavior you can go from 10 to 30. I just don't think that's immutable. So I think if it is immutable, the, the value that you're constraining it to is one value unless you do some sort of upgrade or package install or something that changes it. As in whatever's written in system is the immutable value that it has. Yeah, but different interfaces in the system could have different values, right, for that item. Yeah, yes, or different interface types. I mean. The bit, the bit I want to, the bit I want to desperately avoid is us allowing, basically writing a new transactional behavior on the client API that says now uh, you have to force clients to do config changes in two steps. You have to first delete this this configuration, then you can recreate it with something else. Because I think that breaks what we're trying to do in Yang, uh, uh, of saying you should be able to go from any one valid configuration to any other valid configuration, and the server should do. The instrumentation, uh, instrumentation to get from A to B, and you shouldn't force that onto a client. So that gets. Well, okay, actually, I'll go back in the queue. Go ahead, Leon. Thank you. I mean, this uh, discussion that uh, Rob summarized so well now is exactly what I meant by this offline validation in the previous interim. I don't care if we can do it in offline tools or not, but it should be possible to take any given configuration and answer the question, is this valid or not? Regardless of what, knowing anything about the current configuration, that is a key thing, just like Rob said now. Um, going back to, to, to Rob, your case there, I guess, um, I guess one, 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 tricky part to it is I think if there's if there's a list entry with an immutable field um, and the list entry can be deleted I, uh, I guess uh, maybe maybe I just want to reiterate that I think I think that's in line I think what you're saying is in line with the fact that we're not going to preclude a server or, or enforce that a server must err on this. Um, but I'm, I'm just a little bit worried about what you said about destroying and recreating with a, a different value. I mean, if there's an immutable field and a client tries to write to it, I actually, I actually don't want to preclude that a server must err. If a server under the hood wants to destroy and recreate the object, that's still transactional as far as a client is concerned. In other words, the client is declaring what the end state it wants to achieve is, says commit, and the server does what it needs to to achieve that. And I wouldn't want this immutable flag to preclude a server from doing that behavior. But, but my point is that is not immutable. That, that property I don't think should have the immutable flag on it because I don't think it's immutable. 
So if we end up with an immutable flag where it says some servers will allow you to go from current state to desired state and it'll, and it'll do any modifications internally, and yet we allow other servers to say no, it's okay for us to force the client to delete the parent list entry that it's on and recreate the list entry to do that. I think that's really bad. I think we just ended up um, well, sort of May. fractured. I, I thought, you know, I can't put in the chat. I thought, I thought we were kind of going towards saying that the server may reject it, rather uh, than prescribing so I, that it must. I think it's a may, but so it may reject it, but but you can't, but it should not be used for this scenario. So, so what I'm saying is, it says that either the value exists in running or it doesn't exist. That's fine, but if you re recreate it, it, has to have the same value again because that's the only value it can take. I don't like immutability being you can use it to program a value into the device and then and then you can program any value you like, but once you program that value, you can't change it. I don't have any issues with like the system configuration that says, like in the example given here with SSH, it says the SSH protocol name is used and has this property, so you can't change that. You can create a different one, but you can't change the existing one. If it was that the port number was marked as immutable. And it says, well, when you configure SSH, you can assign the port number 22, and that's fine. Or you can delete the SSH and add another one and, and assign a different port number. That's also OK. That's the thing I want to avoid. It needs to be that the, the properties you're expressing, and that's what works well with system, is it says it has these values. This is, this is what the configuration is. So if you, you can put this configuration running to complete the configuration, you can't assign different values to it. But you can assign that. You can overwrite it with the same value to make the configuration complete. Um, but but none of that breaks transactional behavior. Well, uh, I mean, I, I think I I might see what Jason's saying, and uh, we're not talking about a system defined list. We're talking, uh, or or. You know, let's just assume it's not a system defined list. It's some other list, and it's completely in. Uh, it only exists in running, apparently, um, and so the client does an edit config and they set a value in that list. So, so like, okay, like the before configuration state and the and the and you know state A and state B. So state A and maybe even a state C. So state A is that there's there's no value in the list. State B is now there's a value in the list, and state C is really back to state A. I or or maybe there's a different value in the list. Um, but the the point being is that once the you achieve state B, and you do a get with the immutable flag set, I mean, and to three GPP's case, they would say, oh, um, it's immutable. Um, they flagged it at the server and flagged it as immutable. Um, and, and so, um, now if you were to just try to delete that one node itself, it would fail, uh, presumably, I mean, may reject is what we're saying. Um, but that would also be a valid, I mean, state B, if you just go back to state A, it, I mean, state A was a valid state. So the client could say, I want to go back to state A. And and hence it by doing so it removed it wiped out the node that the server just said was immutable, but state A was a valid state. So um, I don't know. I guess it's a, it's a little bit twisted. Um, or or to give a, a concrete example that some of the devices I've worked on you can put an interface in a mode where it's running in uh, an L2 mode or an L3 mode. And internally, the way that's represented in the system is radically different. So uh, if you want to change it, even though the configuration looks like you can change this property between L2 and L3, within the system, you have to delete that interface object and recreate it again with a different property all the way through the system. And um, when customers have a valid configuration and they've configured that interface to be L2, and they want to move to another valid configuration, and that interface is now L3, they don't want us to come along and say, oh, no, you have to delete the interface first in, as, as an intermediate state, intermediate configuration. And then you can go to the one with it now in L3. 
they want to be able to go from configuration A to configuration C and have the device itself it, delete the interface and recreate it without any sort of impact on the client. And so what I'm saying is I, I don't, and for us, we, we all get bug reports if we can't do that transition. That's effectively the, the requirement from our customers are saying, you have to be able to transition from state eight, from any valid state to any other valid state, and you as a system should take into account any instrumentation you need to do to get between those two valid states. If you're moving from, try to move from state A to an invalid state, of course you reject that, that config change. But it's, it's going from a valid state to another valid state that we should always allow. And I don't want the mutability flag to be or annotation to be used to stop that and force an extra intermediate state on the client because it just makes the client's lives so much harder to do. And hence, what, what I'm requesting is I think this draft should be very explicit that the immutable flag should not be used for that purpose, as in it should be um, you must not use it this way. So, so Rob, that, that, that scenario you uh, described, we have exactly the same thing in our implementation as well. I've seen it. Um, and I guess what you're saying is, um, like, if it's useful to express that behavior to a customer, you know, hey, by the way, your interface is going to be completely torn down and recreated. So, for example, all your statistics are going to be reset back to zero, et cetera, et cetera you wouldn't describe that as immutable you describe that as if you if you want to do some proprietary <laughs> metadata that says uh destroy and recreate parent or something if you were going to advertise that property it's a totally different property than immutable uh yes great that, yes that's what i that's exactly what i'd say so i can see that so the thing is uh, <sighs> I'm not sure we can, I'm not sure it's so easy to invert it and then preclu preclude, uh, create text that prevents um, uh, other implementations from amusing immutable in that scenario though. It just feels very specific to have like text that says, well, for this specific scenario, um, you you know you're not allowed to use the mutable tag i mean a mutable tag is it's just it's it's i think we're still debating whether what what a server is allowed to do with it but i mean we're going to say either may or or must reject the change um i maybe maybe you're actually advocating that we're we are saying that the server must reject the change uh, but uh, i just don't know if that's too sweeping to control the situation you're you're trying to preclude i i think you we could state the the desire or the goal of being able to move from any valid configuration to any other valid configuration and the mutable flag should not be used to prevent that from occurring as in it shouldn't be used a way to signal that server is going to force transaction force a third or split transactional behavior on the client i'm strongly for exactly that yeah okay i can see that um, and I, I think the way the draft is defined can kind of achieve that because um, we we only allow stuff. The only immutable instance data allowed is instance data that existed in system. So you can't have you know interface foo with MTU fifteen hundred uh, exist in the same software release as interface foo with mtu of 1492 like there's only one valid state for interface foo uh, configuration because it's defined in the system config like that actually i'm thinking that to use the statement like server may reject uh, or my error could be the right way since sometimes the server could just accept that but doesn't uh, does not apply that so it it can be accepted by servers but it will not be applied su successfully so maybe that's another case for the server did not reject but 
would not apply. Yeah. No, that's something I don't agree with. If if the server silently accepts a configuration that it's not actually using, that could be very problematic. I think it if it is not going to do it, it must reject it. Okay. I think what uh, Shafan was saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Shafan, but is kind of what I mentioned earlier with the Pastel's principle, where a server effectively ignores all um, immutable attribute or metadata that's coming from the client. It's just ignored. And so that's the case where uh, the, the may reject would be, well, it would, like, that particular server instance would, would never reject like um, that particular scenario. I mean, we're, we're, the point uh, to Jason, you know, we're always, the, ultimately the draft would have to say, it must reject, may reject, or must ignore, or something like that. Those are the three states, I think, or, you know, we need to pick one, um, ultimately. That is not how I understood, Shufeng. Uh, you're talking about the attribute, which coming from the client has no meaning, and we could ignore it. That's not a problem. The problem is if a client sends in a configuration that has some different values than for immutable true things, like SSH TCP port uh, 2222, and the server just ignores that because, well, it knows it's got to be 22 anyway. And that is something I am against. Oh, OK. Sorry. I do agree with you on that point, Jan. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so let's move to that last slide and talk about it a little bit in the last few minutes that we have here. Um, I think we've had a, a great discussion, again, uh, following on the interim that we had two weeks ago on the system config draft. Um, really getting into the details of uh, this draft has helped a whole lot. I, uh, and so um, thank you everyone for the discussion. Let me prepare a uh, show of hands. Do people see the show of hands by chance? I, I think I started it. Yep. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no one was no one was uh, voting or humming, so I couldn't tell. Well, I see the vote. On the I see it now. Screen. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it now. It 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 just. I think everyone was in shock. <laughs> like, <laughs> it started. Now's my time to vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, anyway, this is very optimistic this is um well of everyone that has uh you know contributed to this show of hands it's unanimous that um this draft is ready for adoption so uh congratulations to the authors and the oh but yes you, you you still have to take this to the mailing list right uh, of course yeah okay uh, yeah, we'll right. uh, we'll do the minutes and uh, take that to the uh, mailing list. Uh, the adoption poll itself w goes to the mailing list, right? So, I mean, it the adoption is a consensus process, and uh, so there's two things that go to the mailing list. One is the um, minutes, and second is the adoption poll itself. Um, yeah, Rob. So, so I support I support adoption of this, but my adoption is still conditional on the comments I made before in terms of we want to make sure um, that that this this can't be used as a backdoor to, to effectively change the semantics of the Yang or NetConf protocol. Uh, so that's my that's that's my side. That's that's with no hats on as well. It's just as an individual. Okay. Um, so not ready for adoption yet. Uh, the authors need to make a couple changes. And then uh, when ready, um, they can ask for it to be adopted. And the chair is going to be adopted at the time. Uh, not, hopefully that's not from my, my side. They can ask for adoption now. And the adoption call could happen now in the current draft. I don't have any problems with that. But I think 
assuming I, I'm to, I'd write comments back in the adoption saying, adoption it conditionally with these comments that these things are addressed. That would also be fine with me. So I don't want to necessarily slow this down if your comment, Kent, was on my response. Uh, it was. Uh, okay, and I, and I understand. You would make that be a, an adoption um, response condition. Like yes. You, you, okay, okay. You're, you're giving a preview of things to come. Uh, so there is no blocking um, actually kicking off on the current version of the draft. Thank you. Correct. The clarification. Yep. All right. Any uh, last closing comments? Um, I mean, it's kind of like we did, we 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 did the the main thing. Uh, we achieved that goal. Uh, <laughs> I suppose we should give time back. I don't want to enter into another conversation, another topic. Um, thank you, Shafan, for presenting a uh, good uh, slide prep. And thank you, everyone, for participating in the conversation. Um, uh, I guess we're pretty much concluded with the, with the interim, um, but I'll just leave it open for a little bit so people can sign off. All right, bye all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, bye.